And welcome back to Your Regina 120, uh, the list of 120 videos of things that I've learned as a student at the University of Regina, one for every credit hour that I was a student. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about the affirmative conclusion from negative premises logical fallacy, which is kind of a continuation of the previous video in a way, as the previous video was kind of the exact opposite, the uh, negative conclusion from affirmative premises. If you haven't seen video 20, I the previous video, go do so now because we're going to be building on some of the things that we talked about in the beginning of that video uh, to kind of save time. As you may notice, that was a bit of a longer uh, video than most of the others in this series. So, uh, it um, may also be worth uh, remembering that even if you've even taken uh, Logic 100, which is where you'll kind of pick up a lot of this stuff, um, it's worth going back and reviewing uh, these logical fallacies and the list of them, uh, if you can, you know, go crack your textbook maybe once every couple of months or once a year, you know, even if you, you, you think you know all of them, just refresh it in your brain because it's really easy to start forgetting one or two of them uh, and just, you know, pass by a con or a, an argument with, you know, an affirmative conclusion and negative premises and, and just kind of forget that that is actually a fallacy and that is not a valid argument uh, that you should be accepting. Uh, so it's an easy thing to slip. Maybe this video is not the right media for, to help you in particular, you know, refresh your memory, but then again, maybe it is. So, you know, hopefully some people at least are going to, you know, get th this series or th these part or this part of the, this series uh, and uh, help them kind of refresh their brains a little bit. Uh, but, you know, if, if it isn't, that's okay too. But uh, I should also point out something I learned from the second video after kind of Googling around. I've been misspelling premise, which is kind of embarrassing, but, you know, you learn things. Um, so this is actually how it's supposed to be spelled. There is an E at the end. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but, of course, it's you know, based on a Greek word, uh, something like... Uh, uh, something like that. I don't even know. But, you know, it's not that important how it's spelled. The important part is the concept and to be able to look at arguments and to recognize uh, the affirmative and negative uh, premises and conclusions within them and to make sure that, of course, there's only one negative premise if you have a negative conclusion. And in this case, you cannot have a negative or a, a positive conclusion from entirely negative premises. So that this is kind of like another restriction on the kinds of arguments that are valid, the kinds of arguments that you can make, the kinds of reasoning that you can validly make um, in order to, to justify a conclusion, to justify something that you want, to, to, to reach something that you want. So um, uh, another thing worth pointing out before we kind of get into examples of this uh, is something I probably should have said in the last video but didn't, uh, which is that you may not encounter these arguments in a fully written out form that is, you know, so easy to see as per on a whiteboard uh, with all the premises in front of you and the conclusion in front of you. Sometimes you will get a argument of the form where you get one premise and then a conclusion. Uh, however, the second premise is implicit and it is assumed that there is a second premise there and everyone would even admit that there is a second premise there who's, who's part of the discussion or the argument in question, uh, but it is never actually written down. So the first thing you should do if you encounter a, an argument where you know, you're, you're suspecting that this uh, may, may be active, uh, or, or maybe even just as something that you can double check every once in a while to make sure that the arguments are valid, is to write out the second premise. So you start with the first premise, which is given to you, you write out the second premise, which is kind of assumed or, or, or implicit, and then you apply you, you know, your rules that you've built up uh, of the, the list of valid arguments that you can make, or the valid kinds of arguments that you can make, uh, and in particular look for this fallacy among others, the affirmative conclusion from negative premises. So what does a, a, an argument of this form look like so that we can spot it?
seems a little bit ridiculous, but this is the example I almost wrote down in the previous video, which is that no donkeys are fish. So this is, again, reviewing what a negative premise is. You see this no here. That's kind of our clue that this is a negative premise that we're starting from. Some asses are donkeys. Therefore, some asses are fish. Again, this is what actually we can kind of... This is wrong. Some part is not backwards. Okay. Try another example. No people under the age of 66 are senior citizens, which is a negative premise. Uh, no senior citizens under the age of 66 are children, which is also a negative premise. And the conclusion of this argument is all people under the age of 66 are children, which is an affirmative premise. So just looking at this, we have two negative premises based on those no's there, and an affirmative conclusion. And looking at the conclusion, it looks ridiculous, and that's because it is ridiculous. Uh, sometimes you're going to be lucky like this. Where you're, you're, if, if you look at something like this, it'll be simple enough that you can just look at the conclusion and look, say, that is wrong, and go forth from there. But not all conclusions are like that. Sometimes it'll, it'll reinforce a preconceived notion that you have, and you won't be able to spot it. Uh, in this case, you probably, you know, unless you're really, really old and consider everyone who's younger than 66 a child already, um, you know, you're probably not going to accept this conclusion. Uh, but there, this argument specifically is not a valid way to reach this particular conclusion. And so uh, let's look at a Venn diagram for it. So no people under 66 are senior citizens. And no senior citizens under 66 are children. And therefore, all people under 66 are children. Uh, so. And so if we have say, this one shaded, Imagine you know, someone existing in this space here, where they're under 66 and children. They're not senior citizens. Uh, and the senior citizens and children in intersection, there's nothing there. But there is intersection here. And so, again, we have this situation where we have uh, two premises that are described by this particular uh, situation, and which are true. The two premises are even true. And the conclusion is not true, uh, even though uh, you have two uh, premises and a conclusion that have some kind of internal logic 
but nevertheless the conclusion isn't true, uh, and it's not a valid way to reach this conclusion based on these two premises. So, uh, just as a summary, um, one, negative conclusion, you have exactly one negative premise. If you have an affirmative conclusion, you need at least one affirmative premise um, in order to get a valid argument. We will provide more rules as we go, but if you only remember these two rules from all arguments that you get in from now on, you know, you'll, you'll at least miss these kinds of, of mistakes, you'll miss these kinds of trip-ups and you'll, I guess, be clearer and, and better at reasoning for it. So again, um, hopefully uh, the uh, examples in this case, again, aren't too confusing. Uh, if you're interested in more examples or, or more Venn diagrams or anything of the sort, feel free to ask uh, questions anywhere where this video is posted. Uh, hopefully you enjoy, and uh, see you next video.